wooden floors, slippery sweat patches, mirrors across entire walls, bars of bright lights overhead. Studios and stages have been my home since I was three. And when you stand alone in an empty auditorium, even a whisper has a special echo. An echo that I now know goes so far beyond the studio and the stage and deep into my daily life. And I'd like to share with you the seven most valuable lessons that I've learned from the performing arts. Why seven, you ask? Is that all the number of lessons that you've learned in 20 years in this crazy, ever-changing wonderland? And why not three? Three is such an easy number of lessons to remember. The truth is, I like the number seven. It was the title of the first dance theatrical performance I ever choreographed. And when you choreograph, you realize very quickly that even numbers, boring. Odd, numbers, formations, people, that's where the magic lies. Also, the newly risen Buddha took seven steps. The Christian God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. Hindus make seven promises to each other across a sacred fire and Muslim pilgrims walk around the Kaaba and Mecca seven times. Wonders of the world, chakras in our body, notes of music, uh, colors and light, look. I hope I have you on board with the number seven. It's great. Post our session, you should Google the psychologist George Miller's paper on how seven is the maximum, I mean, is the ideal number of items that our working memories can retain. It is fascinating stuff. Well then, with scientific reason backing my artistic choice, let's begin. Number one, audition. Over the years, watching performers audition has been one of my greatest privileges. To witness someone walk into a room with their portfolio shaking in their trembling hands and just giving their best, knowing fully well that with 20 parts and 200 people standing outside, the odds are not in their favor. Two years ago, we had this little nine-year-old walk into the room to audition for the part of a tentacle. We had eight actors play the thinking, feeling tentacles of an octopus. After several awkward, really bad attempts, he asked us if he could turn his back to us. I know, right? Theatre sacrilege. But he was nine and we didn't want the child to cry and we knew he wasn't getting the part anyway. So we said, yeah, sure. So he turned around and he took a deep breath in and he did the piece. And we thanked him and uh, then he asked us if he could do it again. And I don't know why, but strangely we said yes. I think, I think we knew something special was happening. This time round, he faced the side wall. The little smile on his face transferred onto ours and he did it better. And then he asked us if he could do it again. And this time round, he took the lines and he put them in his pocket and he brought us to tears with the most joyful, heartfelt performance. He didn't get the part, but he really tried. So try, audition. You know, when you watch an audition, you watch a warrior battling self-doubt, one of life's greatest demons. And when you audition, you reaffirm faith in your abilities, in your own self-confidence. Open yourself up to judgment. Be vulnerable. Go and audition. Bear your heart even though you, you know it'll break. Um, apply to your dream college. Go to a hundred job interviews. Mend that friendship that broke up over something you don't even remember anymore. Rejection is frequent in life and in the performing arts. But don't stop knocking, you know. You've not, you've not been denied entry into the house, just a single room. Okay, so you audition, you take the plunge, you leap out of the plane, you're flying. Well, you're only flying if you paid attention during class and you listened to your teacher and you practice because otherwise, I'm afraid you're falling. When you do your open water scuba diving certification, the, 
the course doesn't focus on what to do um, when you see a pretty fish or beautiful coral. No, the course is centered around what to do if you run out of air or if your mask starts leaking or if you lose the weight belt that stabilizes your buoyancy. So when you prepare, don't prepare for smooth sailing. Prepare for stormy seas. Performing artists train. We train hard and we train every day. So when we're on stage, we don't have to think. We can combat faulty sound systems and collapsing sets and wardrobe malfunctions. We practice so that we don't worry about our next step or our next line. When we're on stage, we have the ability to make eye contact. Stand in the light. Tell the story. Rehearse. And you know what? I'll go one step further and I'll say, make great rehearsals the goal. Performances, presentations, exams, these things are fleeting. But the daily rigor and reward of your desk and your studio, that prepares you for anything that life will throw your way. My husband, Darius, is a radio presenter and an improviser. And the golden rule of improv is yes and, agree and add on. The, now, the way this works in a scene would be like if one player said, Madam, our specials of the day are a penne, a rabiata, and a, the, the pumpkin soup. Now, if the other player responded with, but I'm here to pick up my car. Yeah, you'd probably get the momentary laugh, but you'd have actively destroyed the scene. For a scene to work, you have to say yes. Yes, I would love some penne. But don't forget the and part, okay? And I'd love it with some olives and a smattering of eyeballs. Now you have the audience's attention. Agree and add on. It works on stage. It works in life. Be open. Listen. Be agreeable. And always remember to actively contribute. I believe everyone needs to participate at least once in their life in a contact improvisation jam. Contact improv is a completely improvised form of dance. Dancers remain in contact with one another while exploring ideas of gravity and friction and uh, inertia. And once you start to move, it's quite amazing what happens when you stop trying to assert yourself. You know, unlike ballroom dancing, there is no designated leader or follower. And once you trust your partner, you start to trust yourself and you realize there are no mistakes just infinite possibilities. For the magic to happen, all you need to do is be open, active, and improvise. Being on stage is exhilarating. Time, it functions differently when you're on stage and the audience and the actor breathing the same air, the, the ephemerality of it all. But early last year, all the stages shut. And we, like everyone else, had to adapt, had to reimagine different ways to present our work. So my team and I, we took a bold step into the uncharted world of filmmaking. Well, at least uncharted for us. We directed and wrote the entire thing virtually. And because no two characters could be in the same room at the same time, creating a plot that didn't stagnate was challenging to say the least. Started off and I wrote the first draft and I tossed it in the bin. And then, and then I wrote the second draft and I tossed it in the bin. And then I wrote the third draft. And this time round, I just, I started it from a completely different part in the story, from a different, different actor's perspective and go watch the film and tell me what you think. My point is, don't hesitate to undo. Control Z, undo and redo as many times as you need to. Throw your papers and throw your notions in the bin. Start from a different place. Take on new challenges, explore new angles. Reimagine. Western contemporary dance, 
was born from rebellion. Ballet dancers threw off their shoes, they undid their hair, and instead of leaping for the sky, they rolled across the floor. Reimagine, reimagine yourself. If you're a hip hop dancer, try belly dancing. It'll change the way you think about your sexuality. I speak from experience. If you're a city kid, go and stay at a farm for a couple of months. It'll make you rethink your place on this planet. Again, I speak from experience. Throw off your ballet shoes. Unfurl your hair. But never forget the alignment and the strength afforded to you from plies and pirouettes. Study, understand the classics, learn all the rules, and then roll across the floor like a contemporary dancer. Most people would agree that Sir Ben Kingsley's portrayal of Gandhiji was fantastic. I mean, after all, he won an Oscar for it and a BAFTA and a Golden Globe and weirdly a Grammy. But what about Sir Ben Kingsley as Trevor Slattery in Iron Man 3? I mean, one of the greatest actors of all time playing this bumbling, struggling actor fool has to be one of my most epic Marvel moments. And Amir Khan playing Pluto the dog in Zoya Akhtar's Dil Dhadakne Do. You don't have to be center stage to be memorable. My then boyfriend, now husband, told me that he first developed a crush on me when he watched me play Timon in The Lion King. Not Nala, not Sarabi, but Timon. I don't know who this is more awkward for. Take every part that comes your way, even if it's a single line of dialogue. You don't have to be center stage to be memorable. You have to be good. I had a very Madonna and Usher pop and hip hop type of NRI childhood. Um, but I also studied Kathak. And when I went to choreography college, I learned about the Natya Shastra, the ancient Indian encyclopedia upon which all our Indian classical dance forms are based. And in the Natya Shastra, Bharat Muni describes the Navras, the nine essences or emotions that a performer portrays in order to invoke in the audience a bhava or a state of mind. You know, actually, to begin with, there were eight rasas. The ninth one, Shantam, peace, was added later. Funny how peace is always an afterthought, huh? Okay, before I digress, the first rasa, Shringar, love, beauty, yearning, is most typically portrayed by Radha, adorning herself with jewellery, awaiting the return of her beloved Krishna. Now, if like me, you don't really subscribe to formal notions of gender and religion, this part could be challenging. But make the connection. Think of it as something that's real to you. Something like the two blue WhatsApp texts. Okay, so you send a text to someone you really like and you know they've read it. You see those two blue ticks, but they won't reply. So you spend the entire afternoon changing your display picture again and again and again and again till you find one that makes you look chill, but like in a gorgeous sort of way. Shringar, right? Love. Beauty. Yearning. To make your work meaningful, all you have to do is look for the connections and make connections in every field. Make connections with the people you work with, the people that you're going to have to see every day. Performers are highly emotional characters. I guess they have to be. They never leave. They stay back after rehearsal and they hug each other like 100 times before they, stay, before they say goodbye. But you know what? Stay back after rehearsal. Drink tea or coffee or... Beer if you must. We all have so much in common. We all have families and hopes and fears. And to find out how these overlap, all we need to do is spend time. And time spent making a connection is never wasted. This entire talk has been my love letter to the performing arts and so I suppose it would be completely befitting to end with the quintessential The show must go on! 
but you guys have just survived one of the most mind bending reality altering years in all of our history and you're still learning and striving and persevering and proving every day that the show will go on no matter what congratulations you guys congratulations so no i'm not going to end with the show must go on i'm going to end with take a bow no when the show is over performing artists get so deeply entrenched in their work so passionate about the projects that they're working on that sometimes they completely lose any objectivity they're unable to see when to stop and you know what it's okay to stop it doesn't undo what you've done or make it any less meaningful i uh, founded tarantismo creative dance company in 2004 when i was fresh out of college and the company my cool dance partner and i we strapped on our blue suede shoes and we began the most terrific tango we traveled all over the world went to international dance festivals reality television shows met all these exciting people and we were in sync the entire time matching each other step for step and then one day 12 years later i don't know it was almost like she and i the company and i we were dancing to two different songs and even though it was one of the hardest things i've ever done i held her close and i thanked her for everything that she's taught me and i twirled her into the safe arms of two of my dearest friends she talent is more creative dance company may no longer be mine but the music we created together will always be my most precious playlist so take a bow let the curtain come down walk away from that difficult relationship repeat a year if it means that you can choose to study something that actually excites you i know it's hard but if i hadn't done it i would have never I would have never been able to read to my son Arhan every morning or realize that I'm deeply passionate about writing or have lemurs perch on my head in Madagascar or cycle down the riverside in Belem. If I hadn't walked out of the auditorium, I would have never been able to see all the lessons that I had learned in there and I wouldn't be here sharing them with all of you. So, audition, rehearse, improvise, reimagine remember that center stage is overrated make real connections but most importantly take a bow thank you